Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make an electric smoker and also you can use this for charcoal, which is what I'm using now, but I'm going to take you in the greenhouse and show you how to put one of these together using electric. If you have a problem with having open flames, such as you live in an apartment complex or your neighborhood has a burn ban. So just remember, this is both electric and charcoal and it works great. Right now I'm smoking some sausages and this will be ready in a matter of less than an hour. If you've ever wanted to buy one of the big green eggs, the smokers, they are extremely expensive. And the Japanese version, I believe, is called Komodo, and it is also very expensive. I've seen them priced over $2,000. So I'm going to show you how to put together one. Basically, I'm putting it together for less than $40. So I'll show you all the steps along the way to how to make your own smoker with some stuff you may already have around your garden. Now the material list is pretty simple and it's not a lot of stuff, but basically it's going to be two large terracotta flower pots, unpainted, un, no type of sealant on it. You want them to be just as they came from the store. These two are about 14 and a half inches at the top. So I'm going to say they're about 14 inch pots. I think the bigger the pot, the better. So that's one thing you want to take into account. You're going to need a tray to put your meats on. You can use a barbecue, the standard line grill, or you can use a one like this. This is also specifically made to go inside of a grill. You're going to need some drill bits, a specialized ceramic masonry drill bits to drill through your terracotta pot to put your thermostat in. That's very important because you want to keep an eye on how hot it is. And then the next thing you're going to need is a simple electric eye. You can get these on Amazon. They're super cheap. I'll put a link in the description to one. Also, you want to seal your two pots and I can use either carbon felt or some self-adhesive product that you put around a stove that can t tolerate high heats. So I'm going to show you how to put all this together. It's really simple and it only takes a matter of about 30 to 40 minutes to assemble it all. Now one thing I have not mentioned is you might want to use terracotta feet on your base planter because if you're using this on a deck, a grill, or a wood surface, the bottom of it can possibly get a little bit hot. So we want to make sure that we elevate it up off of any wood surfaces. If you're using it on the ground then that's fine, but either terracotta feet like this or possibly bricks. Just remember, you want to elevate it just slightly off the ground. Now, the first thing you want to do is you're going to need to run your electrical cord through the base of your bottom terracotta pot. And what I've got here is I've used a neoprene collar to run that cord through because we're going to put sand in the bottom of the lower pot to keep the cord from getting overheated and the base of it. I don't think it's going to get extremely hot up under the hot plate, but still, we want to keep that as cool as possible. So there will be sand in the base of this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip that over. We're going to put our cord in first. And luckily, I'm not going to have to do any drilling because the pot is so large that the hole at the bottom of the terracotta planter, let's see if I can do this without making a massive amount of noise there, that is big enough to run our cord through. So we'll just put it through there. Kind of hard to see, but I'm going to do it blindly. And we're going to run our cord to the base of that pot. And we're going to put that in there, make sure it fits properly. This was actually for sale at Amazon for 14. This was for sale at Amazon for about $14. And it was very uh, good quality, I feel, because it had a lot of reviews on it. Also, it can go up to $1,100. Excuse me, it uses 1100 watts. So we know that it's going to be powerful enough to smoke our meats and turn our wood product into a smoke that will really flavor the meat. I'm using apple wood, and so I'll show you how to put all this together. Okay, next we're going to run our cord and we're going to pull it down and run it through. This is, like I said, it's a neoprene collar for that I use in the garden for growing seed, seedlings and cuttings. And so we're just going to push that in there. No sand will be able to escape. The cord is at the base, so this will prevent any type of sand leaking through there, and the cord will be protected once we add the sand. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use an unused funnel. Make sure you don't use one that has had chemicals in it before because your sand may pick up some of those contaminants. So we're just going to put this on all four corners of our hot plate, and we're going to fill that up to the base of the hot plate to prevent the cord from overheating. And I'm just going to go around each side and add just enough sand, dry sand, make sure it's dry so it will go through the funnel easily. You can find this at most hardware stores. It took me a couple of attempts to find it, but once I did, 
it works great. And we're going to put the rest of that in there. So the base of the hot plate, we don't have to worry about that cord getting overheated. And in addition to preventing the cord from overheating, this kind of stabilizes it so your hot plate doesn't move. It'll be sitting on top of the sand. Now, one thing I want to point out, in order to leave this in there and not have to try to take it out and adjust the temperature, I set it to high. And the way I'll cut this off, I'll just pull the plug out rather than trying to manipulate this. I'll just leave it on high. And that way it will make it easier. It'll stay in here and I don't have to worry about taking the hot plate out because it's a little bit hard to adjust once it comes in contact with the side. So just remember the way you're going to cut it off, you're just going to pull the plug on it. Now, next we want to test the size of our cooking pan. This is where our wood product is going to go. We're going to set that right in there and make sure that it's got a little bit of room around it. It's not wedged in there. And that will be where you put your slightly moist wood that will start smoking. But that's very good. I don't feel it moving even when I put some pressure on it, so I don't have to worry about the hot plate tilting or moving in the wrong direction. So the hot plate can cool off just a little bit around the edges, but most of the heat is going to go out through the exhaust port. Now next we're going to test our grate. Now I chose this type of grate because it's going to be wedged in there and I don't have to worry about it flipping. A standard barbecue grill grate may tilt to one side unless you build a structure or unless it's a perfect fit. This type of grate is going to be wedged in there so I don't have to worry about it moving. It's very secure and I prefer, personally prefer this type. It's even hard to get out once you put it in there. So just remember that if you use a barbecue grill grate, you may have to put some stabilizing features in there to keep it from tilting over if your pot is rather large like this one. Now, another great thing about this cooking surface, it comes with this handle that you can use to pull out. It's a little hard to pull out because you've got nothing to grip on. So you can just put this in there and tilt it and pull it like that. It, it's really wedged, it really gets wedged tightly. So you just have to remember that if you save this, and this was part of the package, I'll put a link to where you get this from, but it's really easy to just to put it in there and pull it out like that. It makes a little bit of noise like I just did, but it just lets you know how secure that grate is and you can also maneuver it before it gets hot just kind of put it in in different angles and make sure it's perfectly level before you start cooking now i really like using apple wood i think it really flavors the meat well and i'll put a link down below where you can order this but you just put a little bit in there and you can slightly moisten it if you'd like and that can help that steam rising up can flavor the meats and things like that as well but you're just going to fill it right up to the maybe almost the edge of your baking pan so just remember you don't have to put it any higher than that but you just want that meat that wood to get really hot so it's going to flavor the meat properly so now we have the base of our smoker ready to go we're going to work on the lid and i'm going to show you how to install a thermostat and how to be very careful about drilling out the hole for the thermostat now the next thing we're going to need to do is install our universal fit temperature gauge basically we're just going to need to drill a hole out, maybe about a quarter of an inch on about midway down the ceramic lid we're using. So just remember that we need to use a special drill bit that are specifically made for ceramic. These are ceramic glass and they're not, they're going to be less likely to crack your pot. But at the same time, you want to have a little bit of moisture on the pot just to prevent any cracking. And you want to do that just slowly work your way up from a small bit to the size bit you need to install the temperature gauge. We're going to remove our wing nut and we're going to test our hole to make sure it's going to fit properly and that's a really good fit once we put the wing nut on the inside tighten it down this is going to stay in place just perfectly all right let's install our thermostat we have to remember that we have it upside down our lid is upside down so we will be flipping it in the opposite direction like this and tighten that down on the inside flip that back over and there we go all right we've got our thermostat installed it's a very tight fit some smoke may escape through that but the majority of our smoke is going to come out of the top of this we can plug that with tin foil if we want less smoke we want more smoke to be in here even hotter but this is our thermostat to let us know that we've got our temperature at just the right point for smoking the meat now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some of our high sealant oven sealer on there and this will do two things this will keep the smoke in and will also prevent any possible cracking because as anybody that's ever used ceramics knows 
that they can break and crack very easily. So you want to be gentle. If you don't have a gentle touch, maybe this is not the project you want to do because you're going to have to get, really get used to being gentle as you're working with this. So just remember that it's really not designed, you know, the Komodo, the big green egg, that's really heavy duty ceramic that will take a lot more punishment. But even they, if they're not taken care of properly, even they can crack. So there's our sealant. We'll put that all the way around and we're going to test our lid and see how that fits. Now the lid I have is slightly larger, so it's not a perfect fit, but it will seal properly. All right. Now I may have not said that correctly before, but this is high temperature sealant. So it's not just a standard sealant. This is one specially made for high temperatures, but we're going to put our lid on and see how that fits and let that sit there for a minute to help that adhesive bond with our terracotta. Now, as I mentioned previously, the top is where a lot of your heat's going to escape and the smoke, but I've opted to put in a handle right here with a metal base and a wood handle, and then I'll need to put in some exhaust ports on the sides. If you decide you want this to be your primary exhaust, then you're going to need to have a couple of handles on the side, but I just only want one on the top to make it a little bit more simpler. So I'm going to disassemble and we'll add that right now. Okay, so I'm going to put it some exhaust ports around the side because this is going to be sealed for our handle. We're going to have a bolt coming out and there'll be a washer in it. So a little bit of smoke may escape here, but we want there to be two or three, maybe four exhaust ports around the sides. I don't want to drill too many in the bottom because it may affect the structural integrity of the pot. So I'm going to just put a few around the side and leave this one at the base. Now I want to make that clear just one more time that I used a smaller bit as a pilot hole to start and then I upsized it to the larger bit I have. So just remember you don't want to start with the largest bit because you may be more likely to crack your terracotta pot. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole in a piece of scrap wood and I'm going to make a handle so we can pick it up without burning our hand. If we try to just pick this up directly while it's cooking obviously we're going to burn our hands so you just want to make sure that you build either handles on the sides or one for the top. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add, and I've taken our piece of wood, I put a bolt through it, I've drilled a hole, we're going to put two washers, and they're going to stay at about this level right here. We're going to put a nut above it to keep it from going any higher and a nut below it, so that way our handle is a little bit off the top of the pot and we don't have to worry about it getting quite so hot. When we grab it, we want to make sure we try not to grab the top of this metal. We might be able to put a piece of carbon felt on top of that. I might put some type of rubber or something, but that can transfer some heat up through the metal as well. So you just want to make sure that whatever type of handle you use, make sure you have it where you can pick it up without touching the metal there. All right, so I'm going to take it apart and we're going to put it together there. And that way we will have a handle so we don't burn our hand. Put our first nut on like that. Make sure we don't cross thread there. Second one like that. And then we'll put that through like that. Put a couple more washers on and then tighten that down. And our handle will be set in place. So after going through about three different sets of bolts and nuts, I finally found some nuts and bolts that work. I bolt it in the inside so it won't move. It can be picked up quite easily. And you just want to, again, be careful. You can use a smaller washer maybe so that heat won't go out to the edge. I might replace this washer with a much smaller one, but I just wanted to get it put together so I could demonstrate that it will work as long as you're careful. And you want to make sure when you set it back on the lower piece do it very gently because again terracotta is very very fragile and it can break very easily but it can tolerate high heats so guys after installing the handle on the top so we don't burn our hands trying to remove it it's easy to pick up it's just a little heavy so just remember you want to be gentle when you set it back down i know i've said that once but just remember terracotta is easily broken if you're not careful with it but anyways we'll move it to closer to the house so i can bring some meats out of the kitchen and i can start smoking them but it's really simple to put together i try not to do anything fancy with it i just wanted to make the most basic smoker i can make that doesn't require a lot of specialized tools and this is really simple to put together
So guys, I really hope you liked the video and I hope you'll try to put one of these together. If you've got flower pots this size around your house and you want to have a, your own smoker, this is a super simple method to put together. The heater element that you buy from Amazon is super cheap. I'm going to link everything in the description below except for the terracotta pots and the sand because you can get those at your local hardware store and shipping terracotta, it's easily broken. So I hope you'll like and subscribe and have a great day. Thank you.